the TI-58. I had the, uh, I used to be really into calculators. I had the TI-59 when I was in university, and it was actually a very nice calculator. I kind of lusted after calculators since I was a very young boy. I don't understand that part of it, me at all. But um, the, uh, the HP scientific calculators is the ones that I like really wanted, but those things were incredibly expensive. Still are. Like they're twice what um, a TI calculator costs. Now this one, um, it had nice positive clicks on the buttons. You could tell when you pressed something and it had wonderful programming capabilities. I mean, it was like a small computer, really. Uh, you could easily get a couple hundred lines of code with subroutines. It was a basic like um, programming environment. You could do all kinds of things with it. And it had a, uh, a memory chip that had various different um, collections of specialized calculations, um, surveying, um, navigation uh, by sea and by air. Uh, they had elect electrical engineering modules and all kinds of things. Um, financial modules. Yeah, no, it was it was uh, it was quite a uh, quite a line of calculators at the time. But um, anyways, um, I don't know if I should try and find myself a fifty. 59 just because th the difference was you could program a barcode reader there's a barcode reader in, or not a barcode a magnetic stripe reader in um one of the in the 50 no i'm gonna get one just because like that would be so cool to have and you could you would push the card through and it would read in the program and store it into memory so you could have like a booklet of programs all coded in and <sighs> It was an amazing piece of technology for its day. Like this was 1982, 1981. No, it probably came out in 79 or 78, probably in, in that era. And uh, to have that much computing horsepower in your hands was um, amazing, I thought. Anyways, um, this one has a bit of a problem. We have to, um, we have to um, unfortunately fix the batteries because you know the batteries have basically gone the batteries have gone and leaked so we've got these old NICADs that we need to replace and on the inside here we've got a broken contact but I think some of this stuff can be pressed into service to replace that that broken contact and um, let's bring this little baby back to its glory um, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get myself a 59 just to have as a toy. Anyways, let's get on with it. Okay, two screws get to in, and then you just gently pull this back, and it opens up, and you can see its full glory inside. Like, check this out. They've piggybacked some chips. I, I, I'm going to... And th that actually looks like it's been um, cut manually in order to fit it in to yeah it's been trimmed it's totally been trimmed in, in order to fit it inside the case holy smokes that was uh designing to a form factor i'll, I'll say holy camoli and yeah, the tab that was um in there i found falling out of the the calculator um here we have some bypass capacitors, jumper ring, probably power to ground on that chip there. Um, these would be the special purpose calculating chips. That looks like a power supply to me with an inductor and some transistors to do... Maybe it's a tiny little switch mode power supply. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at that closer. Um, and uh, yeah. So that's the glory inside of this little baby. Um, I have to solder something back onto there. How's this switch? Does that just pull off there? Not really. I think it's... Oh yeah, it's just bent a little bit to provide some mechanical um, contact. I don't know. Yeah, that just pops off like that. I'm not going to get too fiddly with that because oh look at that it's just jumpers for an adapter 
I could easily make an adapter. Um, that's the polarization mark. Oh no, actually, there's two bits to the polarization there. There's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, like a crown, um, a rhomboid crown, and then there's also a, 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 rid, a, bar, a, a groove that you would have to um, make something, but that just looks, I wonder if that's standard. Yeah, that's a jumper. That's just a jumper. Could easily make a little um, adapter for this baby, so it could be powered from the wall. Man, oh man, those days spent in physics lab, banging away on the calculator. <laughs> kind of miss it. So the seven segment LEDs, wait, are interesting because they're underneath these little optical lenses that magnify the the LED so they can make them small, but then they have to magnify them with these little convex lenses. I'm not sure you can see that. There's little, yeah, you see there's a ridge of bumps there. That's the, uh, the lensing for the LEDs. So those LEDs are probably tiny in there and it's the, uh, See right inside there? Not really, not all that well. So yeah, but there's um, there's tiny LEDs in there, and it um, it uses these bumps as uh, lenses to magnify the uh, the size of the image. Cool. I haven't seen a display like that in a long time. Well, that's interesting. So that's the power coming in. It um, comes in through there, goes through those pins over to these pins which lead to these diodes, which two going in one direction, two going in another direction, leads me to believe that that's a bridge rectifier. So it's an AC adapter that it is expecting the voltage from. Hmm, that makes it a little more difficult to figure out what kind of an adapter to use. But, uh, hmm, I wonder if we can't bodge straight from here to here and just, what is that, five volts in? Okay, carefully cutting and prying gets this battery pack. Ooh, that is crusty, holy. Gonna have to get some baking soda around this to. Now, does that just pull out? What's going on here? That one looks like it wants to just pull out, but this one doesn't. There we go. Now, to go clean my hands. The tabs are spot welded on, so I just pulled that one off, and I'm gonna pull that one off, and then we will try and fabric cobble together a AAA, or three uh, AA battery pack to test this thing. So what we're gonna try is just taping a couple of uh, electrodes onto either end, and hopefully the friction, uh, the pressure from this guy on the ends will provide enough electrical contact. We'll see. Okay, so that side's plus, and it provides 4.8 volts, roughly, 4.9. So that might be pretty close to five. And did I get the um, polarity right? Hang on a second. Um, minus plus, battery back drops in there. So that should be plus. Uh, look at that, 4.84. Okay, now solder on to the um, 
the board here a new contact and we'll see if the whole thing chooches. So the original device sort of clipped on. You can see there's sort of a horseshoe shape there, maybe. You can see that there's sort of a horseshoe shape and then a narrow piece. So that locates it on the, uh, on the board. And um, I'll try and duplicate something like that with uh, what I've got. Okay, soldered that guy back on. We'll see if that works. That guy is much springier, so I'm going to have to find a less stiff material than this, I think. Um, probably from a battery pack, maybe. Um, a LiPo battery pack. But let's pop this guy in and see if she chooches. Okay. Master library module. Not sure it's needed to run, but... Let's pop it in anyways. And... Oh-ho! Square root of 9 is 3. Now that we got this guy chooching, let's test its floating point a bit. Degrees... 9. Take the sine. Take the cos. Take the tan. Take the arctan. Take the arcos. And take the arc sine. Uh, should be 9, but it's not. It's 9.00004661. So that is the expected value because um, of the number of guard digits inside and um, how, it, uh, how it's supposed to respond. So, yeah, I think the calculator is calculating. Wait, what? Sorry, nine squared, three. Very good. All right, that uh, seems like a repair.